Last year, I kind of put this rack together quickly, just had projects coming up that I needed the switcher power, also took this rack to Costa Rica. So just kind of put it all together in this fly kit. And now after using it last year and going through some issues, finally diagnosing those issues and kind of revising what I want to do with this fly kit, I am going to do those updates and show you guys what I'm doing. So on the bottom here, we've got just a converter tray and um, right now I've got a net gear switch on here, an older Apple router, uh, Express router. And then there's just the two, two converters. And this is a Raspberry Pi that is running an image that is just a loop of uh, whatever file is on, well, whatever MP4 file really is on this, um, this thumb drive. So this is outputting its HDMI to this first converter. And this, these labels are just temporary. Obviously I just had to get it all together and needed it to be labeled just in case I needed to diagnose any issues. But uh, that's basically what that's doing. The other part that, that these are serving is they are HDMI, or they're bi-directional. So they're HDMI in, HDMI out, SDI in, SDI out. And the cool thing that I learned about these and why I put them in this tray is that you can use the conversion either HDMI to SDI or SDI to HDMI at the same time. So that's exactly what I have going on right now. Um, this isn't, the tails aren't patched to the switch, but basically what I'm using these converters for is multi-view displays. So I can just, I mean, it's all run off the aux, but I can just patch a multi-view display or anything I want to this either converter. And then I have a SDI to HDMI conversion in the kit ready to go. So I don't have to worry about carrying a separate converter to cover a multi-view if I'm doing just a HDMI monitor, um, depending where I'm going. But the other part of that is that I can take HDMI in to this converter and send it into the, into the switch. And then this one is just a spare um, input HDMI input, so if I want to do another loop if I needed it or, you know, a computer source, I can just patch that in quickly. But the problem with this, so all, all this side from here over is working great. I love it, super happy with it. Oh, it's all powered off of this um, USB hub. So right now it's just this um, two-prong IEC and the switcher IEC um, plus the power supplies for these guys. So the problem with the shelf is the Netgear switch and the Apple router. So the Apple router is, it was doing okay, but really I've diagnosed that the Netgear switch, at least these cheaper unmanaged switches, whether it be the eight or the 16 or the 24 port, they're just, they cannot handle the traffic that the Blackmagic gear needs and once you get other stuff on on the same network it just congests and it does not handle it and i am in no way a uh, it professional to answer exactly why all i know is that i tried side by side basically new switches and it solved the problem so i'm switching these and all my all my production switchers switches out to the TP-Link managed, I'll show you guys. But that is not what I'm putting in here. What I'm actually gonna do is put a Ubiquiti Flex Mini because I can then power it off this USB hub. So in doing that, I can remove this, I can remove this, and put this little switch in its place, which is uh, a little less than half the size. But 
um, I can kind of arrange this in a better configuration to then put a backup USB in here. I probably won't do that when I'm making this video, but that is the current plan. And then once I get this all kind of situated, working nicely, um, then I will go back, pull these out, do proper labeling, make it all nice and pretty. But yeah, the, the purpose of having, I, I thought I would use the eight ports. I really didn't because it really just was like patch whatever, you know, was close by, which the idea is really the switch will be on one and then um, I'll, I'll run whatever record decks locally like HyperDeck 1, HyperDeck 2, and then the fifth port would just be my like iPad running mix effect. But anyway, that's the plan. So let me let me get to pulling this old stuff out and putting the new switch in and I'll show you guys how that goes. All right, well, there we have it. Everything's on here, ready to go. This isn't as clean as I would like it to be, but uh, I'm gonna run it like this for now and just kinda see if there's anything else I want to adjust or change, and then we'll clean it up after that. All right, and, and I may add something to the shelf just to, I don't know, we'll see, but anyway more cleanliness to come and cable management. While I had this out and just was kind of doing maintenance on it, a friend told me about a, a software that they make an image or have an image for Raspberry Pis and it's called Playout B and I'll, I'll put it in the description of where to find that. But basically it turns a Raspberry Pi or computer that you have into a playback device. So what's cool about that is I used to use this for just kind of looping videos that was like logo loops or um, still still store graphics. So what's great is uh, I can now use this Playout B software and um, load everything over a web user interface so I can quickly change whatever asset I want to fire and even, you know, even do longer assets and potentially have this as a legit playback device. But for, for my purposes right now, I'm just using it as a, a loop essentially just to play, um, have some, some stored content on there that I can use, but you know, if you wanted to use it for super source background art, like you could do that and it's whatever, 40 bucks for the Raspberry Pi and a case. And then the software is 50, I think. Um, so really cheap to basically get what a HyperDeck is doing or, you know, even like ProPresenter or, or depending if it's just simple video playback. Um, but yeah, I, I will, I will let you guys know what I think about it going forward. But just to show you too, the other really cool part is that it shows up in the ATEM software. This is mix effect on my iPad shows up in the ATEM software as a hyperdeck. So that means that you can do all your controls right from your uh, ATEM software which is great. So other than loading content on it, you have to do that from the user interface or web user interface, but all the control here you can do and um, create or just loop or pause, stop, um, advance to the next clip. So really, really cool. And I'm going to give it a, a try and just uh, I don't have a huge need for it on a couple of the upcoming events. So we're, and I have, you know, some spare looper raspberry Pis, So those will just 
be there and on standby. But I will give it a shot and I'll probably do more content on the playout B depending how it goes. But anyway, to, to finish this up, um, I put the other USB brick here. So this will power all the converters. There's nothing in it right now. I don't know if you can see that. I can't pull the shelf out anymore. There's nothing in it right now and I have this turned around so the USB ports are in the back side. So this will power all the converters for any graphics machines that are coming into the rack or into the switch. Um, this one is still just powering everything here, the, the converters, the Raspberry Pi, and now the Ubiquiti switch. Um, but you know, it, it, this could serve as a backup power supply, but I just kind of want, I like the power supply being locked into this rack or secured in the rack. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the current state of this rack. But anyway, that's the current state of the rack. I'm gonna do upgrades and, and updates along the way and I'll let you guys know about Playout B and put any other useful information that I, I find um, in the description and potentially do more videos down the road. So thanks for watching, I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys next time.